Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, I welcome you to the lecture number 28 of the course title Psychology of Stress, Health and Wellbeing. Uh, so this is the first lecture of module 10 and overall it is lecture number 28. So in this module also we will uh, keep talking about uh, various happiness enhancing activities uh, that are you know, uh, uh, re that research has shown certain potential in terms of enhancing our happiness. Uh, so, today we will talk about uh, the concept of signature strength or psychological strength. How can we enhance our happiness using our signature strengths or psychological strengths. Uh, so, before we talk about today's lecture, let me uh, briefly talk about what we discussed in the last module uh, and specifically in the last lecture. So, in the last module also, module number 9 was also about happiness. Uh, happiness enhancing activities and uh, in that context in the last module we have discussed three happiness enhancing activities uh, which are uh, practicing gratitude, acts of kindness and social comparison, how social comparison influences our happiness. Uh, so, we have discussed in detail how they can influence our happiness and by using them how can we enhance our happiness. So, in the last lecture specifically, we, dis we have discussed the uh, concept of social comparison and how it influences our happiness. So, we have discussed that you know uh, human beings have a tendency to compare themselves with others uh, in various dimensions of their functioning of their life. So, uh, and this social comparison has uh, many emotional consequences and uh, consequently also it can influence our happiness. We have also discussed the different types of social comparison or processes involved in the social comparison. Uh, one is upward social comparison, upward and downward social comparison, where we have discussed uh, we can compare ourselves with someone who is superior than us in certain dimensions that is called as upward social comparison. And when we compare ourselves with someone inferior to us uh, in certain dimensions, this is called as downward social comparison. We may also do social comparison in assimilative way as well as contrastive way. So, in the assimilative uh, social comparison, we uh, compare ourselves with a target uh, whom where we basically you know we while comparing with the target, we move towards the target or we we like the target. So, there is an you know, decrease in the gap between you and the target. So, while comparing if you like the target, then it is called as assimilative kind of comparison while comparing if you move away from the target or kind of dislike the target then it is called as contrastive uh, social comparison. So, depending on upward, downward, assimilative and contrastive uh, social comparison we can have uh, different types of consequences in terms of self evaluation. For example, research shows uh, upward contrastive kind of social comparison uh, may have negative influences on our self evaluation. Uh, uh, primarily because we compare with someone who is superior to us and we move away from the target or dislike the target. So, it will have negative influences on our self evaluation, we will feel inferior. However, when we do upward social comparison in an assimilative way, uh, we may derive inspiration and you know benefit from it or there may be positive uh, influence on social evaluation. evaluation. Similarly, uh, we can do downward social comparison in an assimilative way. Uh, then it may have negative influence on us because we are comparing with someone inferior to us and uh, because we like the target, we may feel bad about uh, the situation of the target. Uh, and uh, when we do downward social comparison in a contrastive way, it may have a positive impact on our self-evaluation. Uh, 
uh, which basically means then you are feeling good about yourself by comparing with someone uh, whom you don't like probably and uh, there may be some sense of competition and uh, by finding someone is doing uh, you know, worse than you, you may feel good about yourself. So, all these consequences may be there. Uh, so, this is uh, we have discussed in detail. Uh, we have also discussed uh, how social comparison is uh, you know kind of uh, reflected in social media, particularly you know uh, social uh, networking sites such as Facebook and other uh, sites. And uh, research generally shows you know because the social uh, networking sites are providing a fertile ground for social comparison because there are so many people you get connected and uh, now you have uh, too many people to compare yourself with. And research generally shows uh, too much of social comparison in so social networking site uh, decreases our si subjective well-being as well as happiness primarily because we tend to compare you know uh, we tend to engage in upward contrastive kind of social comparison uh, both in online as well as offline uh, which has negative impact on our self-evaluation. And in uh, most of the social networking side, people kind of uh, portray their best selves, best aspects of their life. So, upward social comparison become more prominent. And also, we discussed how to avoid excessive social comparison, uh, some of the uh, important pointers. Uh, so, these are some of the things that we have discussed in the last class. So, today we will talk about uh, how can we enhance our happiness or subjective well-being or well-being in general uh, by using signature strengths or psychological strengths that we all have. So, in that context, so uh, basically we will have two lectures on, psych on signature strengths. So, we will we'll have today's lecture also we will talk about signature strengths and next lecture is also about signature strengths. So, we will see in details what are signature strengths and what are the classifications. So, in the in the today's lecture, we will talk about strengths and what are the benefits of strengths uh, or, or studying uh, strengths. Then we will talk about VIA classification, which is also called value in action classification of strength and virtue. Uh, uh, we will talk about character strengths and happiness, how it is connected and well being. And we will also talk about how can we cultivate character strengths. So, let us see uh, so, uh, these ideas in detail. So, what are strengths? When we talk about strength, you know, we are not talking about physical strength, we are talking about psychological strengths. So, basically uh, psychological strengths are in a built in capacities for certain thoughts, feelings and behaviors. So, we every human beings uh, they have certain built in capacities, certain abilities, capacities uh, you know in terms of their thought processes, in terms of their emotions, in terms of their, their behaviors. All these built in capacities that we all have, you know, uh, may be in a, you know, ex, in an expressive way or maybe in a potential form, they are called as, you know, strengths. For example, you know, courage is a psychological strength because, you know, it, it gives you a sense of competence and ability to do things. So, it is a kind of strength. Optimism could be a strength, perseverance can be a strength, sense of gratitude could be one of the strengths. So, we have diverse psychological strengths, all of us have uh, various uh, psychological strengths and most of them are kind of building certain capacities that we have, that we express in our thoughts, emotions and behaviors. Uh, the study of strengths are very important and foundational in, uh, in uh, particularly, you know, the branch of psychology called as you know positive psychology because uh, the strength reflects the positive side of human functioning. It is by using strength that we do a lot of positive things in our life. So, therefore, the, this uh, studying of strength is one of the fundamental aspects of uh, positive psychology and it is it has a lot of important implication in diverse areas. There are so many benefits in understanding and exploring our strength, psychological strengths. There are many benefits to it. Uh, some of these benefits, you know, uh, Bonneville in 2012, uh, she summarized in one of her books uh, that understanding and exploring our own psychological strength has lot of important functions and uh, you know, important benefits. Some of these benefits are that, you know, strengths encourages insights and pers perspective in life. 
So, if you explore and understand your psychological strength, they will give you a lot of insights in your life, what you need to do, what is the direction that you follow. Uh, so, it will help you to understand, uh, you know, give you richer perspective to your life. Uh, strengths make one less sensitive to stress. So, if you use strength, obviously, you will, you will use your built-in capacities to deal with the problems of your life and you will be less influenced by the problems and stress stresses of your life. Strength generates optimism and resilience. So, strengths, uh, they generate sense of resilience because they help you to bounce back and give and it also promotes sense of optimism that you will be able to do things in your life. It provides a sense of direction which is also connected to other points that we have discussed you know of when you know what you can do, what are the abilities that you have, uh, when you have a positive outlook towards life. Using those strengths you know you, you can have a very clear idea where, where to go and what to do. Uh, so, it helps you to develop confidence and self esteem. Uh, when you know that you have certain capabilities and strengths, it gives you a certain uh, you know, sense of confidence, enhances your sense of self esteem. It generates a sense of vitality and energy. It is always when uh, under the influences of weaknesses that we do not have energy and vitality. Under the influences of strengths, we are always full of energy and vitality. Uh, it stimulates a sense of happiness and fulfillment. Uh, the more we, you use those psychological strengths, you will be much more ha happier uh, uh, and you will feel much more sense of fulfillment in your life. It also helps you to achieve your goals by uh, using your strengths, you will be more likely to achieve your goals uh, because then you will approach your goals in a proper way, more healthy way, using more healthy coping strategies. Uh, so it increases the chances of reaching your goals, life goals. It enables ones to be more engaged at work and perform better. So, it when we use our strengths, we ha we get more engaged because we know what we are doing and we have the capability to do those tasks and in that sense, uh, we become more engaged in the task and with engagement obviously, the result is always better. So, development and following one's strengths can uh, build resilience and prevent psychological illnesses. So, one of the best or important or important function of a positive traits such as strengths is that they help you to prevent uh, or act as a protective factor against various psychological disorders. So, if you use them more and more you will become less vulnerable to psychological disorders and emotional problems. For example, no, uh, let us say if you develop optimism, you, you are less life likely to experience depression and sadness primarily because optimism is kind of when you are optimistic, you are not depressed, you see a possibility. So, this strength always helps you to become less vulnerable and protect you against various emotional and psychological issues and disturbances. Also, strength approach underlie most successful psychological therapies such as instilling hope, optimism, courage, etc. in clients. Most of the psychological therapies or counselings that are done uh, for people to help them to cope with the problems of their life, somehow most of the psychotherapies are directly or indirectly uh, focusing on instilling certain strengths in their life or in their psychological you know makeup. So, instilling hope, optimism, you know those things are somehow promoted in the clients, so that they can deal with the problems of their life. So, this is uh, that is why it is very fundamental aspects of you know for positive psychological functioning as well as preventing from psychological disorders. So, there are uh, if you look at the literature in psychology, you know there are different approaches to look at uh, strengths. Uh, people have tried to classify psychological strengths in the, you know, different ways. Uh, so, we will we'll talk about two major approaches that are available uh, in the literature. Uh, uh, one is called as VIA classification of strengths and virtues, which we will talk in today's lecture. And uh, there is another approach to look at strength, which is called as Gallup's strength finder. Uh, Gallup is an American you know the consultancy firm which does basically lot of international surveys. They 
identified uh, certain strengths uh, and uh, mostly it is used in the corpo corporate sectors uh, to help employees to find their strengths and you know, excel in their work. So, we will talk about Gallup strength finder in the next lecture. Today, we will talk about uh, a VIA classification of strengths and uh, virtues. So, both these classifications are little bit different in their conceptualization. So, we will try to understand in the due course of time. So, VIA classification of strengths and virtues, VIA basically means value in action. So, these two psychologists Peterson and Seligman in 2004 uh, they published a book where they discussed this you uh, know classification of psych psychological strength, they specifically use the term character strengths uh, in that book and uh, they elaborately discussed this classification of various uh, character strengths in human beings. So, they developed a classification system of strengths and virtues taking cue from DSM uh, and they called it value in action classification. So, uh, many of you may know that uh, DSM basically means diagnostic and statistical manual of psychological disorder. So, in psychology there is an elaborate manual where no psychological disorders are classified in you know elaborately there is different categories of psychological disorders. So, Peterson and Seligman uh, they took the idea from DSM and they said you know if psychological disorder can be elaborately classified why not psychological strength also uh, can be classified. So, they tried to classify psychological strengths as a kind of getting idea from you know classification of psychological disorder in DSM. So, as a DSM classifies mental disorders uh, VIA tried to classify psychological strengths and virtues that human beings display many psychological strengths and virtues we can classify them also. So, they use the term character strengths not just psychological strength in general they used very specifically character strength as a term and they kind of defined it as those aspects of our personality that are morally valued. We look for good characters as a desirable quality in all people. So, these are basically certain desirable characteristics or qualities uh, which are morally valued and uh, we give lot of importance to them in all cultures. So, these are mostly universally accepted morally valued desirable qualities that human being uh, is expected to show. Uh, they call them as character strengths, strengths of your character. So, academic skills and abilities uh, such as thinking critically help people to achieve goals, but without good character or strength in character individuals may lack desire to do the right things. So, one major difference is that you know we people may have lot of intellectual strengths, intellectual strength basically means your ability to process information or thinking critically, those strengths are a little bit different from character strengths. So, uh, basically the idea is those uh, intellectual uh, strengths or thinking abilities uh, they may help you to achieve goals, but strengths of character which are morally desirable they help you to decide uh, you know help you to uh, you know do the right things in life and therefore they are more closely connected to your happiness and well being. So, in that sense they have a very strong uh, relationship to you to the well being of human being. So, according to Park and Peterson, uh, uh, they also uh, elaborated on the benefits of using character strengths here basically you know more specifically we are talking about character strengths. So, exercising character strengths it helps you to prevent undesirable life outcomes. A uh, lot of undesirable life outcomes and behaviors that we show is one of the main reason could be we lack those character strengths you know certain uh, the morally virtuous. Uh, uh, characteristics or traits uh, we when we lack them uh, we may get engaged into various behavioral issues and problems. So, a lot of undesirable life outcomes uh, will be prevented if you develop those character strengths. Specific character strengths such as hope, kindness, social intelligence, self control 
and perspective, taking perspective of others, it helps or buffers against the negative effects of stress and trauma. Some of the psychological strengths uh, research showed are very important in terms of you know protecting you against stressful and traumatic events of your life such as hope, kind, kindness, social intelligence, sense of self-control. These are all character strengths. They may be very important in terms of buffering against stress and traumatic events, help you to protect from those uh, negative influences of life. Uh, character strengths also help people to thrive and are associated with the desired outcomes such as uh, school success, leadership, tolerance and valuing diversity ability to delay gratification, kindness and altruism. So, character strengths are associated with so many positive outcomes in life. They are also found to be associated with success in various uh, dom dimensions such as you know school, uh, success in schools, success as a leader. If leader uh, lacks character strengths, he cannot be a good leader. So, for leadership it is very important. Uh, people with character strength, they value uh, and tolerate diversity of people. Uh, they are able to delay gratification. So, they are just personal sense of pleasure, they can delay it. So, uh, that also gives them lot of avenues to work productively. Uh, they are probably show more kindness and more altruistic behavior or helping behavior. So, it is associated with so many positive outcomes. Now, uh, Peterson and Seligman who uh, kind of um, made an elaborate classification which we will see in the uh, just in the coming slides. Uh, they found 24 character strengths which are universally valued uh, in uh, all cultures. And before selecting these 24 character strengths, you know they use certain criteria to select how to call something as character strengths what should be the characteristics or what should be the defining features of those uh, character strengths in order to include them in the list. You cannot just include any uh, morally valued uh, no, or any strength because there may be you know hundreds of them. So, they use certain criteria to come to a conclusion about certain numbers of character strengths. So, these criteria uh, following are the important criteria they used. One is uh, a strength contributes to fulfillment of the good life for a person and others around him, him or her. So, one thing is that you know that character strength should contribute to the fulfillment of good life. So, it promotes good life or certain goodness in the life. For that person as well as for other people around also it promotes or it does not harm other people's. So, it promotes goodness in the others life as well as your own lives. So, this is one important characteristics of character strengths. Then a character strength is morally valued in its own right. So, this has all its own moral values. So, this is considered something as right in terms of moral aspect irrespective of whether it is it, it uh, whether or not it leads to beneficial outcomes. So, even if you uh, leave outcomes it should be morally valued. So, this is another characteristics. Uh, the third one is uh, displaying the strength does not diminish others, but may rather benefit them causing admiration rather than jealousy. So, when you display those character strength, uh, it should not cause any terms of uh, uh, obstacles or in terms of harming others, it should not do any types of diminishing others in terms of harming or in terms of creating obstacles in the life of other people. Uh, rather it should promote and benefit others. And the last characteristics they use was the strength must be manifest in a range of person behavior, thoughts and feelings, actions. It should be generalizable across situation and time. So, when we say something as character strength, it is more like a personality trait. So, it should be consistently shown by that person across time and situation. Uh, then we can call it, it is his character strength it is kind of an you know, part of his personality trait. Uh, these are considered more like personality trait. So, they use these criteria to boil down or come to a conclusion of a 24 number of character strengths. Uh, we will see what are these. 
So, let us see more detail what is this VIA classification or value in action classification. So, using this criteria that we have discussed in the last slide, uh, Peterson and Seligman identified 24 character strengths which are organized into 6 major virtues. So, they identified 24 uh, major characteristic, st characteristic uh, strengths uh, which are kind of universally valued by people uh, and uh, they divided these 24 into 6 major virtues. So, when they use the term virtues, they basically mean uh, virtues are core universal characteristic valued by moral philosophers. These are more core values which are morally uh, accepted by uh, philosophers uh, and religious thinkers. So, these are core values such as wisdom, courage, humanity, justice, temperance, transcendence. So, virtues are more core values and character strengths are specific psychological processes or mechanism that define the virtues. So, character strengths are more specific mechanisms or psychological processes which defines that virtue. So, these are kind of subordinate characteristics or features of those virtues. For example, love uh, and kindness are character strengths under the virtue of humanity. So, if I show it diagrammatically, so we have virtues at the top level is a more broader category. These are core moral characteristics. Then, uh, they may have certain sub aspects which collectively combine and make those virtues. These are called as character strengths. These are specific psychological processes and mechanisms. that defines the virtue. So, under one virtue there may be uh, many character strengths. So, you may have character strengths 1, you may have character strengths 2. like this you may have many. So, many uh, uh, sub dimensions which defines that particular virtue. So, this is the difference between a virtue and a character strength. So, let us see what are these 6 uh, virtues and their corresponding character strengths. The first uh, virtue they defined or they used or they found out is wisdom and knowledge. So, this is one uh, virtue which are uh, you know, kind of according to them is universally uh, uh, given lot of importance or valued in different cultures or universally valued. So, wisdom and knowledge is the virtue that uh, incorporates strengths that are related to acquisition and use of knowledge. So, it is strength that is related to how to ac acquire new knowledge and use them and apply them. So, application of knowledge actually you know defines your wisdom, whatever you know how can you apply it in your life you know this is one of the important aspect of wisdom, wise people know what where to use what knowledge you know. 
uh, or understandings. So, wisdom and knowledge is one of the important virtue. Uh, some of the imp important character, char character strengths that are associated with wisdom and virtue, uh, wis wisdom and knowledge. These are creativity. Creativity is about think, uh, thinking of novel and productive ways of things, novel and uh, productive ways to do things uh, is one of the character strengths. Then curiosity, taking interest in all the ongoing experiences, open mindedness, thinking things through examining them from all sides. So, you are open not closed trying to look at different aspect of whatever uh, the things that you are trying to learn, love for learning mastering new skills, topics, bodies of knowledge. So, you always have an interest to learn new things and acquire knowledge and the last one is perspective, uh, being able to provide wise counsel to others. So, if you understand others perspective, how people, another person is thinking and feeling, you can give a wise counsel to that person. So, these are uh, five character strength associated with the virtue of wisdom and knowledge. So, this is one aspect, one particular dimension. The next, the virtue is courage, which is another universally accepted virtue. So, courage involves exercise of will to accomplish goal in the face of opposition. So, courage is about accomplishing your goals at the face of difficulties and obstacles. So, the more courageous you are, more you are more able to deal with the problems and obstacles and achieve your goals, whether those obstacles are internal or external. So, courage is defined by that. So, the courage, the various character strength associated with the virtue of courage are honesty, speaking the truth and presenting oneself in a genuine way is associated with the sense of courage, bravery not shrinking from threat, challenge, difficulty or pain. So, this is one of the important aspect of courage. You know, you are not, whenever you face problems or difficulties, do not run away, you, tr you try to face them when it is required, any challenge, any threat or pain. So, that makes you courageous. Persistence is another important character strength, finishing what one starts, you know, persistently working towards achieving whatever you have started. So, that persistent is very important and it makes you courageous. And uh, the fourth character strength is jest, which is about approaching life with excitement and energy, you know. Uh, so, this is very important to make, make you courageous, you know. You approach life or problems of life or whatever things that you want to do with sense of certain excitement and energy, you want to accomplish things. So, all these character strengths make you courageous or Courage as a virtue is inculcated by all these character strengths. The third virtue is called humanity. Humanity is basically associated with interpersonal strengths. So, the strength that are associated with relating with other people, people around us in our society, in our community. Humanity is defines those important characters, characteristics. So, specific character strengths that are associated with the virtue of humanity are kindness. Kindness is doing favors and good deeds to others. So, kindness we have already talked about kindness in one full lecture. So, it is about uh, no, intention to help others, uh, doing favors and good deeds to others. This is one of the important characters, character strength associated with the humanity. Then love, it is about valuing close relationship with others. Social intelligence is about being aware of the motives and feelings of self and others. So, uh, social intelligence, you know, nowadays people talk about different types of intelligence. Earlier people used to talk about only general intelligence, which was mostly uh, related to academic intelligence and the uh, ability to process information. Now, people talk about you know diverse types of intelligence, people could be you know social intelligent, people could be you know uh, intelligent in body kinesthetic way, some people are very intelligent in terms of how to use their body. For example, good dancers, sportsmen, there may be you know musical intelligence, people are go good at understanding music and you know creation of music, uh, some people are good at you know you know, uh, you know uh, they are kind of 
intrapersonal intelligence where you know they understand themselves very much so intelligence now uh, is kind of you know it's multiple intelligence the concept is very popular nowadays so there may be diverse types of intelligence not just one typical in intellectual kind of intelligence which is measured by iq scores so social intelligence is one such aspect of intelligence which is about you know how when you are dealing with people around you how sensitive and aware about uh, their feelings you know uh, motives of others as well as yourself and behaving intelligently in the social situations so the virtue humility may have these three specific character strengths fourth one is justice justice is basically related to civic strengths citizenship right and those kind of thing it includes civic strengths strengths related to you no know, area of civics where it may include specific character strengths such as fairness treating all people the same according to the notion of fairness and justice so you are just generally fair in terms of dealing with people are not partial and uh, biased so that is another important character strengths associated with the justice uh, leadership and team work are two other important uh, strengths you can say uh, that are associated with the virtue of justice you cannot be a good leader show or you cannot show good leadership quality or you cannot be a good team player until and unless you have this quality of uh, justice in you so this uh, virtue of justice or fairness also promotes you know kind of leadership and teamwork uh, so in that sense these three are important character strengths that are related to uh, the virtue of justice fourth one is called as temperance temperance is basically uh, the quality of moderation and self restraints basically it includes a strength that buffers us against excesses we know there is a saying no that excess of anything is bad so uh, this virtue of temperance ha- prevents us from going into excess of anything so that is self restraint helps you to restrain yourself not to go into the extremes of things it helps you to be in the moderation doing things at the optimum level whatever is required rather than going into excess of uh, either side so this this virtue is called as temperance it may have specific character strengths such as you know, forgiveness forgiving those who have done wrong modesty letting one's accomplishments speak for themselves so you people show sense of modesty they don't too much advertise themselves that i have achieved this and that Le- rather you let your accomplishment speak to itself speak for itself it also includes uh, uh, character strengths called prudence which is basically being careful about one's decision not saying or doing things that might later be regretted so prudence is that quality which is about being very careful in terms of life choices that one makes so that you know uh, you don't just jump impulsively to do something you know rather you uh, generally very careful and you know kind of cautious in terms of Uh, making decisions and life choices self regulation is very important that is you know that help you to regulate your actions uh, that you don't go into excess of anything so which is harmful for you so you kind of control yourself this ability to self control um, uh, is very important quality that makes you or enhances this uh, virtue of temperance so these are uh, four uh, character strength associated with temperance the last one is called as transcendence a transcendence is a virtue that is related to connection with larger universe so it is little bit more uh, abstract in a sense it is it, it is uh, more little bit more spiritual and it's about more about connecting to higher things uh, uh, or larger universe uh, Uh, that is beyond your beyond just your personal life so transcendence uh, may include uh, other specific character strengths such as appreciation of beauty and excellence noticing and appreciating beauty excellence skill performance in all the domains of life 
So, this is also something some uh, little bit related to some higher aspects or connecting with the larger self and such as nature, where we appreciate beauty and excellence in various things. Uh, gratitude is also very important uh, quality or uh, character strength uh, related to transcendence, being aware and thankful for good things that happen. We already had a one lecture on gratitude. Hope, hope is about expecting best and working to achieve it. Humor, uh, liking to laugh and joke, bringing smiles to others people and uh, religiousness or related to spirituality having coherent beliefs about higher purpose and meaning of life. So, all these are important character strengths according to them are connected to the virtue of transcendence. So, these six uh, virtues and if you count their corresponding character strengths, you will come you know, in total we will have 24 character strengths under these six uh, virtues. Now, let us see uh, some of the research findings associated with this specific character strengths and uh, how they are connected to well being and happiness. So, various research have uh, uh, consistently linked character strengths to various measures of happiness and well being. For example, uh, Identifying and using uh, signature strengths, they also use the word signature strengths to mean specific character strengths that are uh, inherent in you or you every individual may have certain character strengths in much more pronounced way than others. Most of us will have most of these character strengths, you know, but some character strengths may be more pronounced in some people. So, uh, they have uh, uh, this. Uh, Peterson and Seligman, they also developed a VIA inventory of strength. So, this is a questionnaire which you can use, uh, which is I think freely available uh, in their website and you can use them, use it to find out your own character strengths or your profile of character strengths. What is your score in which character strength, what is your score? So, you can identify your character strength by using this particular uh, questionnaire that they have developed. So, identifying in and using character strengths uh, in everyday life can lead to psychological fulfillment. So, the more you use them, display them, uh, the more uh, there is a chance that you know uh, you will experience fulfillment and happiness in your life. So, using them because these are more positive qualities you know that promotes happiness and well being in your life. Uh, research also shows uh, certain uh, strengths or character strengths are more strongly related to well being and flourishing, uh, such as gratitude, hope, jest, curiosity, and love have been consistently related to life satisfaction. Among obviously, uh, among these 24 character strengths, some character strengths have been found more important or more consistently linked to life satisfaction or happiness, uh, such as you know, gratitude, hope, jest, curiosity, love. Uh, this have been found to be more connected to life satisfaction. Uh, research also indicate that strengths of heart, strengths which are related to more emotional uh, feelings, that is why in, in that sense they are calling it strengths of heart. So, the, the, which are more connected to your feeling aspect and which helps you to connect with other people. Uh, the strength of heart such as love and gratitude which connect people are more strongly related to well being as compared to strengths of head such as creativity and critical thinking. So, they found uh, basically uh, most of the research also indicate that you know strengths that are related to your emotions and connection with other people such as you know love and gratitude, kindness, these are more important or more strongly uh, related to well being as compared to strengths that are related to your head or thinking process such as creativity and critical thinking, uh, they are also important in their own ways, but for well being and happiness, strengths that are related to emotional uh, feelings and connection to other people are more important. And this uh, strength of head which are li like creativity and critical thinking, these are mostly individual in nature, because you show it and it is kind of only about yourself. 
and uh, strength of heart such as you know love and gratitude you always express it towards others so it connects you with other people so in that sense they are more important for well being therefore it is important that our education system should encourage both types of strength for holistic development if you see most of the school curriculum or you know uh, curriculum uh, they are mostly focused on your strength of head or ability to process information and thinking and uh, um, critically thinking and those kind of abilities they are important obviously there are no doubt about it but research very clearly shows for holistic development for increasing well being and happiness we also need to encourage and use more and more uh, uh, strengths related to our heart such as you know which connects with other people such as gratitude love and kindness uh, they also should be promoted in school curriculum in order to in order for the holistic development of a of a child so character strengths uh, such as perseverance love gratitude hope and perspective have all been linked to academic achievement research also shows you know this some of these characters of heart they also actually promote achievement also in the domain of intellectual achievement uh, such as love gratitude you know uh, and uh, some specifically related to perseverance and perspective they all have been linked to very academic achievements in various contexts strengths of bravery and appreciation of beauty has been found to be connected with the successful recovery from illness so recovery from illness some of the character strengths such as bravery appreciation of beauty they help people to recover and you know, and come out of various uh, distress related to illnesses spirituality or religiousness is associated with life of meaning and purpose so uh, it it also promotes you know eudaimonic well being such as you know meaning and purpose so different uh, character strengths may be associated with uh, different dimensions most but most of them have uh, certain positive outcomes and consequences in our life now the important question is can we cultivate character strengths is it possible to promote them so that is the important applied question if you know everything about character strengths and uh, we cannot do anything about it then there is not much use so the let us address this question can we cultivate character strengths now everybody has a signature strengths everybody has certain strengths there is no doubt about it regardless whether you have more or less as compared to others uh, but everybody has those strengths maybe in the potential form or maybe in a more pronounced way this signature strength can be cultivated as we already possess them so these are already there within us whether in a potential form or in a more expressed form they are already there so they can be cultivated even though they are more trait like things they can be cultivated simply because they are already inherent in us and it is easier to enhance something which is already in us it is much more difficult to work on weakness as people lose interest and defensive about them so if you ask people to double you know remove certain weaknesses and other thing it is more difficult because then you know certain deficiencies has to be removed and people become defensive about them and then lose interest in those things but if something is already within you promoting them is actually not that difficult so in a study it was observed that people who use their signature strength for a week in a novel ways increased happiness and decreased depression at 6 month follow up as compared to the control group so research also indicated the people if they use their signature strength or character strength in a novel ways in everyday life uh, it promotes in happiness and decreases depression not just for short time but even you know for a long time even a, fo- a follow up after 6 month also shows that impact is still remained uh character strength as we have already defined them they are more uh, uh, so relatively stable and trait like however uh, they can be influenced by both genetic and environmental factors so some genetics may influence your uh, character trait but in environment may also influence your character strengths in a very strong way for example certain dramatic events can increase character strengths for example research shows character strengths of faith 
or religiousness, hope and love were elevated among US uh, uh, respondents in a study after 9-11 attack. So, one study showed that after 9-11 attack, you know, because this is such a dramatic and traumatic event on US, particularly for the population of US. Uh, in a study, it was found that, you know, because of this event, a lot of respondent or a lot of people developed certain character strengths such as, you know, uh, faith and religiousness, hope and love. Uh, so, this event actually stimulated this uh, certain character strengths among people. So, sometimes certain dramatic events may stimulate changes or increase in certain character strengths. Increase in the strength of bravery, kindness and humor after recovery from physical illnesses. Many people also shows when they struggle with certain illnesses or problems of life, certain strength increases such as bravery, kindness, humor may increase. Increase in the character strengths of religiousness, gratitude, kindness, hope and bravery after exposure to trauma. So, tra after exposure to various traumatic events also people uh, experience certain uh, change in character strength or increase in character strengths. You might remember uh, in, a, in a, the lecture where we have discussed post traumatic growth. So, post traumatic growth if you see the dimensions of post traumatic growth they are all related to character strength actually. So, this is very, very similar to the idea of the dimensions of post traumatic growth. So, after traumatic event certain changes may happen positive changes which are which may actually promote certain increase in character strength. Uh, various ideas and uh, research also indicate that you know that character strength can be cultivated by good parenting, schooling and socialization. So, this strength actually develops over certain period of time. So, it, it may happen after certain dramatic event, but mostly it is important that you know this strength should be inculcated or cultivated from the childhood. Uh, then it is much more easier to cultivate them because child mind is more flexible. Uh, you can uh, promote this thing in a much more easier way if you start cultivating them in from the childhood itself. So, parenting may play very important role, schooling may play very important role uh, or social environment or socialization play very important role in uh, developing these strengths. Research also actually shows uh, positive role models may promote development of good, good character strengths. So, positive role model basically means if you see other people who are also show certain or display certain strengths in character. It may be let us say kindness or love or if they display very consistently and you know, you know uh, uh, that you know uh, let us say somebody is showing uh, uh, kindness behavior in a very strong way and when you look at that person, uh, by looking at that person you may also be encouraged to do such similar things. So, role models may have very strong influence on other people uh, in terms of you know uh, developing and uh, promoting those character strengths in, in, in other people. So, that is why you know uh, people generally in the advertisement where you know they want to promote something they use people who are influential or celebrities because they have certain impact they are they are seen as a role models. So, if they say something do something people are more likely to imitate them. So, in this is true for character strengths also. People should be uh, taught specific activities of strengths and encourage them to keep using them in the daily life. Another best way to use or develop this character strength is you when you find you have certain character strengths, use them more, express them more in your day to day functioning. So, the more you use them more like more likely to uh, more likely that you know this strength will become part of you and uh, uh, and it will facilitate various you know life functionings and positive outcomes. An individualized program for cultivating character uh, based on the individual's character strength profile may be more effective than a general one. So, uh, certain programs have also been developed for you know uh, for schools, for corporates also where you know you know individualized programs are there where you know people individual profile can be found out where which character strength they are, they are more you know um, that is their signature strength and which are less uh, pronounced in a particular person. So, one can make a detailed profile of character strength using those uh, questionnaire 
and based on that specific programs have also been developed and that those programs can be used for uh, you know promoting and cultivating uh, character strengths. So, uh, these are some of the ideas related to the character strengths or signature strengths that can be promoted or we can understand them, follow them, use them more and more and, uh, and by using them we can enhance our sense of well-being and happiness. So, in the next lecture, we will talk about another type of classification called Gallup Strength Finder, where we will talk about character strengths uh, in a little bit different way, where we will talk more about how talents and strengths, more in the context of talents and strength and which has much, much more applicability in the corporate sector. So, with this, I will end today's lecture. Thank you.